Welcome back to my channel for another very special video and in this video I will shoot my Phase 1 IQ4 digital bag with 150 megapixel and a medium format sensor on the Mamiya RC67 Pro 2D and the D in Pro 2D stands for digital. So this camera is actually enabled to be shot with digital bags instead of film roll bags. And it will be a very special video because we'll also look of course into sample images. I have shot two different Mamiya lenses on this camera body. Let's get started. Let's kick off the video. There would be a lot of things to tell and to share about the Mamiya RC67 series and the professional 2D in my opinion is the most versatile one so you can really use it with a lot of digital bags. I come to my challenges when using it with the IQ4 from Phase 1 in a moment. But of course, first things first. And usually there is not a digital bag, of course, coming with the Mamiya RC67. This is an older film camera and it used to have a film bag. And the film bag looks like the following here. So I have it here. You see here Mamiya RC67 Professional 2. There is a film advance knob here and all kinds of elements, you know, some memory for you, what type of film you're using. There is a dark slide here and that cannot be removed at this point in time because it's supposed to protect the film from light and can only be removed if this film bag is mounted on the camera body. And there are two little knobs here which you can use to open this. Let's quickly do this. So here and here. And then you can open this up and then you actually get access to the film compartment. So it's quite nice and that was of course shipped with the RC67. I purchased this in the secondary market because that's the only way you can get it. And my Phase 1 IQ4 of course I have for quite a while and uh, mounting it on the camera was another challenge which will be the next part of my story here. As far as I know there exist basically two adapter plates which you can use to connect a Phase 1 IQ4 to the Mamiya RC67 Pro 2D and one of them is mounted here. It's from Mamiya and it was very hard to find it. I finally found it after a long time of search in Japan on eBay. I purchased it, they shipped it to me and it's actually in mint condition so it looks quite nice. The alternative adapter plate instead of using the Mamiya comes directly from Phase 1 but is sold out. I asked actually at Phase 1, they do no longer produce it, they do not ship it and you have to have some luck in the secondary market to find it. In my case, I found the one from Mamiya, which is doing the trick and working quite well. Let's have a look at the elements on the Mamiya camera body, which I needed for my shooting with the Phase 1 IQ4. And I will not provide a fully fledged review of the Mamiya RC67 Pro 2D. There are other tutorials on YouTube where you can look this up. The first element I want to talk about is here and that is kind of a mode switch here. So if you are on that white square, that's the normal shooting mode. If you are on M, that is the multiple exposure mode and that's actually the mode I'm using for shooting the IQ4 on the Mamiya camera body. And then there is an R and the R stands I guess for rotation because here you can rotate now the film back or the digital back and get into portrait mode. And because the phase one IQ4 is flat and straight and not let's say with a certain angle like for instance the CFV 250C from Hasselblad. It's perfect for portraits. If you look at that, looks quite nice. So you can easily work in portrait mode here and in particular with this lens here which is the 110 millimeter lens from Mamiya, widest open f 2.8. It's an ideal setup for portraits and will be the subject of another video I'm doing in the next weeks because that's not the lens I'm going to show here in this video. I will show two other lenses and we come to that in a moment. But the 110 millimeter clearly is a fantastic lens for portraits and since we have that R switch here and then can shoot this in portrait mode by rotating it or also easily rotating it back into landscape mode, you have a lot of flexibility on that camera digital back combo here. The next element on the camera body I want to introduce is the focusing knob here, but that knob is currently locked. And in order to unlock it, we have to turn the camera and go to the other side of the camera body, where by the way, you also find a hot shoe and uh, some mechanism to actually mount some shoulder strap if you want to do that. And then here is a little lever and if I turn this, then the focusing knob is unlocked. And now let's turn this around to the other side. So we see the scale unfolding here. So let's turn it and then you see how this is coming out of the camera body in a very nice, very much old school way. 
and unfold some scale we are going to explore in a moment. And that's the way you focus. And focusing at infinity typically requires you to get this all into the camera body. And that is the infinity setting. And then here you start to get closer and closer to your subject and get a closer subject into focus. And it's a very nice mechanism. It works buttery smooth. And in general, the build quality of the Mamiya RC67 is just absolutely remarkable in my opinion. Let's now have a closer look at this distance scale here, which comes out and reveals itself when we push out the bellows. On the left hand side, we have a distance scale and that distance scale is in white numbers for meter and in yellow numbers for feet. So for instance, as we can calculate easily, one meter corresponds to 3.3 feet. On the right hand side, we have focal length and that's for different lenses. So for instance, we have here the focal length for a 65 millimeter, 75 millimeter lens, 90 millimeter lens, 110 millimeter lens, and so on. And this doesn't include all available lenses, but most of the lenses which you will use on a Mamiya RC67. At the top, we see by how many millimeters we have pushed out the bellows. And at the bottom, we find an exposure compensation indication. White means no exposure compensation necessary. Light shaded means half a stop exposure compensation necessary and gray shaded means one full stop exposure compensation is required here. The compensation required depends on the lens in use on the camera body. And the reason why we need it here is that if we push out more and more the bellows, then less light will hit the film plane and that needs to be compensated is actually the same principle which you find in large format cameras. Now, each of the blue and red curved lines corresponds in a one-on-one -on -one relationship to a focal length on the right-hand side. Which line is corresponding to which focal length you see first of all indicated by the red and blue color. And then you have on each of these curved lines a tiny little white dot which indicates that this is the line corresponding to the focal length on the right hand side. So let's make an example. Here for instance for a 110 millimeter focal length we find the tiny white dot and then we know that this red curve matching the red color of the figure on number 110 is corresponding to the 110 millimeter lens I have currently mounted on the Mamiya RC67. In this example, let's focus now at a subject which is close by the camera. And by focusing then, we see how this is shifting and giving us the information we can now read off the diagram here. And the way to do this is the following. First of all, we found that tiny little white dot indicating that this red curve here corresponds to the 110 millimeter lens we have currently mounted. Then we follow that red curve and end up at a one meter distance. And that means if the subject we were focusing on is sharp with this setting on the bellows, then we are currently focusing at a distance between the subject and the film plane of one meter. And if you remember what I said before, I said that focusing at infinity means the bellows are completely in the camera body and focusing at a closer distance means the bellows are pushed out of the camera body and if they are pushed out we might need some exposure compensation. Then we also see here that for the 110 millimeter lens we would now need to compensate for half a stop on the exposure side. In a nutshell that's essentially how the scale is working. Again, there would be more to say, but if I include every tiny little detail of the Mamiya RC67 Pro 2D in that video, that video will become way of too long. So we need to move on to other aspects of that wonderful camera digital back lens combo we have here on display. The next element is the winder here on the side, which also cocks the lens because these lenses here from Mamiya, they have a leaf shutter built in. And the way to do is you just take that winder and you wind it until it comes to a stop then you let it go and then you have here the shutter release and by the way if I'm in normal shooting mode the shutter release can only be released if there is a film back mounted on the Mamiya RC67 camera body and since there is no film back mounted at this point in time but my digital back I cannot release the shutter button here not possible so I go into multiple exposure mode M here and then I can release the shutter button and now listen to that fantastic sound here how wonderful is that it moves the mirror of course because there is a mirror construction inside and it also moves the leaf shutter in the lens. It's quite nice. Let's do this once more just to enjoy the sound. So here we go. And then let's release the shutter button. Wonderful, isn't it? The next element to consider is the waist level viewfinder. You just pull it up here 
and then it unfolds and it's quite nice. So let's have a look inside to see what a nice clear picture of the scene in front of you you get when you look through this viewfinder and in particular shooting with an electronic back here or a digital back. I use the Simbright sunlight because the digital back LCD is sometimes very hard to read if it is very bright outside and then of course this type of viewfinders is way of superior to a digital LCD display. Let's have a closer look at the waist level viewfinder and as I showed before you just pull it up and then it unfolds and uh, you see here inside now already some representation of the scene in front of the camera and there is also a little lever here which I can push and then the magnifying glass comes up and then you have an even better visual expression of the scene in front of you so let's have a look into the viewfinder and let's see how this looks like. And this is now the view through the waist level viewfinder and through the magnifying glass and if I now turn the focusing knob on the side of the camera body I can focus. So for instance let's get this all into the camera body. This would be focusing at infinity and then of course the scene in front of me is blurry and then I can start to fine tune this and try to find focus here. This was too much. I think here kind of it is. It's very hard to see through the display of my filming camera now of course but somewhere here and uh, doing this in bright sunlight is so much better than doing it via the LCD screen on the back of the IQ4, even if you go to the brightest setting in the LCD display. Again, there would be more to say and to show. For instance, here on the magnifying glass, you can exchange that. I rotate it and then I can remove it. You see here? And I can use a different diopter setting here if I want. And I think there are four or five of them available which you can purchase. As I said, everything is in the secondary market now. You need to be lucky if you want to go for a spare part, which you don't have, then, you know, good luck with taking some time for finding it, as it took me some time to find the Mamiya adapter to mount my Phase 1 IQ4 on the Mamiya RC67 camera body. At the left hand side of the camera body, we find the shutter dial and the fastest we can go here is 1 over 400 seconds. And by the way, white numbers indicate fractions here. So 60 in white, for instance, means 1 over 60 seconds. And then if we continue to turn this, we come to the yellow numbers here. And on the yellow numbers, that actually notes now seconds. So this is, for instance, a 4 second exposure. Then we come to a bulb mode. And bulb mode means the shutter remains open as long as I press and hold the shutter button down and uh, it nevertheless closes automatically after 60 seconds. Then we have an RBL mode and that's if you want to shoot the RC67 with lenses for the Mamiya RB67 system and then you can use this setting here and then you have the auto exposure find mode and that's an aperture priority mode and if you have mounted the prism viewfinder there's actually light metering going on TTL means through the lens and then it finds exposure automatically and you cannot accidentally turn this further or back you have to push that button here and then you can go to the manual mode again. The design of the Mamiya lenses you can use on that camera body is kind of the same for all of them so if you understand one you can basically shoot them all. And here currently mounted is the 110mm lens widest open f2.8 and that is a fantastic lens for people and portraits. And as I said, there will be another video coming where I do actually portraits with that lens in that combination with the IQ4 and the Mamiya RC67. So stay tuned and don't miss that video. The first familiar element we find on that lens is the aperture ring here and that is widest open f2.8 and then it can be stopped down all the way to f32. There are also nice stop clicks, just listen to that. Very nice mechanics, I like a lot what I'm seeing and also what I'm hearing here. The next element here I want to discuss is time exposure switch and that is a very important element which sits here and currently it's in normal mode, you see that green capital letter N but I can push this up here and then it locks and now it's in time exposure mode and that means the shutter remains open until I release that switch again and that is what I use in combination with the electronic shutter on my phase 1 IQ4 to actually take exposures with that combination and uh, the reason is that every mechanical attempt to shoot these lenses with a sync cable or anything else with the IQ4 completely failed and uh, I of course approached phase 1 and they sent me the following mail. And in the mail they say, quote unquote, I'm sorry to say that the IQ4 is not compatible with any version of the RC. The instructions you refer to is for IQ1, IQ2, IQ3, which all share a common platform. The IQ4 has really nothing in common with the old platform and despite the name, 
a completely different platform. This is unfortunately one thing the IQ4 can't do, but the list of things the IQ4 can do compared to the older bags is long. In this mail from phase one, I learned that there is no longer a menu entry, which I was looking for at first sight in the IQ4, like we had it on the IQ1, 2 and 3, where you could actually choose the Mamiya RC67 Pro 2D as a camera body where the digital back is mounted. That's all gone with the new Infinity platform at phase one, but I found a way to do it. I will show my workflow in a moment. And uh, the electronic shutter is crucial here, as well as this time exposure lock switch, which I just showed. Here on this side, we have a flash sync port. And then here on this side, there is another port, which you can actually use for a cable release to open the leaf shutter via a cable release. And that's quite nice. I purchased one again in the secondary market and it works very well. Another element on these Mamiya lenses is the blue ring here. And that blue ring can be turned, but it's not changing anything in or on the lens. But it has nevertheless an interesting function because it gives you an indication of the depth of field. So let's make an example. If I focus here at three meter, for instance, and that's the lineup I need to do here, and I would have my aperture stopped down to f32, then I see here I'm about in a range where everything is reasonably sharp between about 10 meter and uh, let's say close to two meter. So that's the range I get here. If I focus, for instance, at five meter, and I have an aperture of f8 chosen here on the ring, let's do this quickly for the sake of completeness. Then you see you end up with that dash attached to the eight between three and five. So that's probably a 4.1, 4.2. And then it goes to, I think about 7.5 meters. So between 4.1 meter and 7.5 meter, everything will be reasonably sharp. If I choose an aperture of F8 and focus at five meter, of course, for landscape, I focused at infinity and then you get here the corresponding indication of your depth of field. The shutter button sits at the front side of the camera and has three different settings. I'm going to illustrate this quickly. So if you have the white dot aligned with a white square, then you are in normal shooting mode. So let's quickly cock the lens and then I can release the shutter button. So that works. Then there is another setting here. If I align the white dot with the red dot, then the camera will not deplete the battery and will also not deplete the battery of the digital back, which they explicitly mention in the manual. And that means let's call it the camera is switched off. And then there is a last setting. And if you align the white dot here with this orange dot, you're in an emergency setting. And that means if your camera has been bleeded out, has no more life, is completely dead, and you nevertheless want to shoot, you can do so by aligning the switch here, the white dot with the orange dot, and then you can shoot at give or take one over 400 seconds, but that's it. You have no deviations from the scheme on shutter speed, and that's all you can do. And then the last element I want to show on the camera body, and as I said, there would be much more to talk about, also the different ports, but we don't need that for our shooting here, is the battery compartment, and that's here. I can just open it here, and then you see there is a standard battery included, and you need to replace this from time to time, as just said a moment ago, you can always shoot it in emergency mode if you want to, but it's of course then not with the functionality you have and the electronics built into the camera body. Let me quickly demonstrate the workflow. So first of all, in the settings here, we need to have on camera, we don't have, as we just learned from phase one, the menu entry for the RC67 camera body. So on electronic shutter, I need to have this on and I also don't want to have a capture delay here. So let's switch this off. Sorry, I just accidentally went somewhere else where I didn't want to go off. So here we go. Then we go back and that's basically already it. Then let's go into the live view and the live view is dark because of course the leaf shutter is closed. And what we need to do now is we need to cock the lens. That's done. We need to switch on time exposure and need to lock it. That's also done. And now we can go back and we'll get a live view if we release the shutter button. Let's do this. Here we go. Now we have a live view and now we can fine tune our settings here. So we can say, for instance, we have exposure time here of 100 seconds. We have an ISO of 800, whatever it is. This is for my information only, but on the lens itself, I decided for an aperture of F4 so that I have it in the metadata. I need to basically set it up here and then we can go for the shot. Let's go. 
Here we go, that is overexposed. All right, so we can go back here into the camera menu and can go here to, let's say, one over 200 seconds. Let's go again. We could also have reduced the ISO value, of course. Let's take another shot. That looks still overexposed. So I think I will tweak down the ISO value now and we'll go to a 400 ISO. What we also can do in the live view here is of course we can now focus and we can focus by using the focusing knob here. And as I said, in bright sunlight, I recommend focusing with the waist level finder. Here now in the studio, we can also do this via zoom. So I get my face off the model here and then we can fine tune this. And I think this looks quite acceptable. So let's go back to the 5% view and now we can take the shot again. So let's do this here. And that's the shot. Looks quite correctly exposed now to me. So that's the workflow. And then when I'm done, of course, I can get everything back and can get my waist level view finder down. I can unlock the time exposure switch here. That is also done. And then the camera is ready for a normal shooting mode without the digital back. So I can basically wind it, cock the lens, release the shutter button, whatever I want. It's all ready to be shut with a film back or whatever I want to mount at the back of the RC67. The first lens I'm going to shoot in this constellation with the IQ4 and the Mamiya RC67 camera body is the Mamiya 50 millimeter widest open f4.5 and the design of the lens is exactly the same as what we just saw before on 110 millimeter. You have here an adjustment blue ring for determining your depth of field. There is a floating system inside here. We have an aperture ring with nice clicks and it's basically what you have seen before. Flash swing port here you have the time exposure switch which I can lock. Everything is exactly the same just that the focal length is 50 millimeter and that we have a widest open aperture of f4.5. And then the second lens I'm going to shoot is this one here. That's the Mamiya 75 millimeter widest open f 3.5. Again, the elements on the lens are exactly the same and it turns out that this here really is the burner. Whereas the 50 millimeter lens, I personally think is not capable of fully resolving the 150 megapixel of the phase one IQ4. That lens here really hits the nail. I use this for landscape. I will show you in a moment the sample images and the shooting scene and uh, you will see that this is mind blowing what you get in terms of results from this 75 millimeter lens. As I indicated already when I showed the two lenses I was shooting on the Mamiya RC67, the 50mm lens did not really make me happy because at least the unit I have was not able to fully resolve the 150 megapixel of my digital bag, whereas the 75mm lens was super sharp and actually exceeded my expectations. And uh, on the 50mm lens I want to start with one image here which was shooting location number one and it looks good. From a distance, it's also if you crop in by 100% into the 150 megapixel frame, reasonably sharp, but it doesn't have the clarity, sharpness and crispness I'm used to when I'm shooting with my phase one IQ4. Here you see some cows here on green grass that all looks fine, but it is not as sharp as I would have expected it. And uh, I would say reasonably sharp, but not hitting the nail. And uh, maybe that is due to my particular unit because as I said everything to be used with the Mamiya RC67 has to be purchased pre-owned and in the secondary market and maybe my lens is not the greatest representative of the 50 millimeter Mamiya lenses but at least here it doesn't look as crisp and sharp as I would have expected it and maybe if you have shut this lens why don't you share your experience in the comments so I can see what other people have experienced with that lens. In contrast, my experience with the 75 millimeter lens, as indicated before, is totally different and the total opposite. And this lens is sharp, crisp, absolutely spot on. And it was such a pleasure shooting that 75 millimeter Mamiya lens 
on my RC67 Pro 2D. And here's the first image I wanted to show. And cropping in by 100%, you see on this tree here, this is absolutely amazing what level of detail has been captured by that combination of the IQ4 on the Mamiya camera body and then with the Mamiya 75 mm lens. Absolutely stunning. This was shot at 1 over 200 seconds and an ISO of 100, so it's a really good image. And I like a lot the way this lens is representing and replicating what's in front of the camera in the scene towards the sensor of my IQ4. This is now a frame from shooting location number two. And I think it's an absolutely fantastic images because the rail tracks here lead you directly towards the mountains. And if I crop in by 100%, you see how sharp this is, how crisp and how every detail is resolved in the way the 150 megapixel medium format sensor of the IQ4 can deliver it. And that 75 millimeter Mamiya lens is playing so nicely, I should almost say easily with my IQ4. So much detail, such a nice image. Let's move on here a little bit. Here is another image and that's going towards the green hills. Very nice, I think, again, a lot of clarity, crispness and sharpness in that image, even here at the electro fence. Quite nice, let's continue. Here is an HDR frame, which I took from four shots with different exposure levels, of course. Again, if you crop in, very crisp, very sharp, very nice. And it's always a bit hazy in that area, close to municipality Schwitz, but uh, you know, the camera can deal with it. I think here is another image I wanted to show. So that's a panorama stitching, four frames. This image here was shot at one over 400 seconds and an ISO of 100. 481.5 megapixels. So this is a huge resolution coming from that panorama stitching. And again, if you crop in by 100%, looks just gorgeous. Absolutely amazing. Nothing to complain. Every detail is captured in that scene. And uh, the camera together with that 75 millimeter lens and of course the terrific sensor in the IQ4 is just playing so nicely together. Let's move on here. There is another panorama stitching I wanted to show. Yes, this one here, slightly different perspective but same shooting location number three, which I didn't mention in the video clip before. And again, very clear, very clean, very crisp. This is a close to 400 megapixel image. So 392.6 megapixel. And the level of detail you capture in here is absolutely mind blowing. I will conclude the sample images here. I think this is proof of evidence. I think it's a testimony that this combination of the IQ4 together with the Mamiya RC67 and then together with the 75 millimeter lens really delivers from all angles and that this is a value package. If you have it, you can use for fantastic photography. I hope you liked my story about shooting the phase one digital back IQ4 150 megapixel medium format sensor on the Mamiya RC67 Pro 2D. And I like that journey. I really like the experience. I think the image quality in particular on the 75 millimeter is stunning and is really cool and as I said next time in the next weeks I'm going to shoot the 110 millimeter lens in exactly the same constellation for people and for portraits. If you liked that video don't forget to drop me a thumbs up, stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course peace out.